Hi, this is Daniela Cambone, and welcome back to our Outlook 2024. We are continuing our series with uh, more incredible guests. And joining me today is the great Willem Middlecope. He's the author of The Big Reset. He's also the man behind the Commodity Discovery Fund. Willem, thank you so much for coming on. It has been a while. Good to be back. Yes. Welcome back to the Daniela Camboni Show. Now on ITM Trading, I should mention. Okay. We have a lot to, to get into. Um, so we'll save the pleasantries for the end. But I know the focus today is going to really be about, you know, what is at the crux of your thesis here about the West going up against the rest. But I just want to get one other point out of the way. And that's what's happening over at the Fed. I mean, we saw uh, Jerome Powell uh, indicating that we can expect three rate cuts. I bring this up because back in September, you were already telling me easing has already begun. So it doesn't even matter what narrative they're saying. But now we're seeing a couple of Fed officials, major Fed heads here over at the Cleveland Fed, the, the New York Fed, Atlanta's uh, head, Rafael Bostich, all pulling back the reins here and saying, all right, maybe we jump the gun here a little bit you know they're seeing obviously the market reaction saying the cuts may come but later in the year everyone just kind of chill out here so they're doing some damage control willem well of course the market reaction was so strong look what happened to gold they jumped uh, 60 70 dollars uh, in the 24 hours after the first remarks by jeremy powell our own funds uh, jumped six percent in just two three days so i think they just want to dampen the uh well the markets a bit and, and we also had these uh well in frankfurt uh, we had the ecb uh Ms. lagarde uh, telling the markets that rate cuts weren't uh, inside, uh, weren't to be expected here in Europe. So uh, I think I think they want to confuse the market a bit more. Well, and and I just bring this up because when we spoke at the Denver Gold Forum a few months ago, you were you know you were saying you know easing has already begun. I mean, for the folks who are hearing this for the first time, Willem, can you just explain why that you know why you say that? Why you know what makes this so crystal clear for you? Yeah, we always make the mistake by looking uh, through the American, uh, well, lens, uh, so to say. So always we always watch the gold price in dollars. We always watch the interest rate cuts and then we look at the Fed. But you have so many different markets. You have so many different national banks. And um, I was pointing out uh, even in Denver a few months ago that the first central banks in Latin America were already cutting rates. And the same goes for gold. You know, we've seen all time highs for gold in most of the other currencies, but we always ignore that. Most of the, of the investors ignore that and they only watch the dollar. But so if you want to know what will happen uh, with gold in dollar terms or what will happen with rate cuts in the Federal Reserve, just look a bit further and look what happens in the rest of the world. And often you can find the clues there. Yeah, it will be interesting to see how this rate cuts narrative uh, plays out in 2024. I mean, is that that's got to be one of your top things that you're eyeing for the for the new year, Willem. Yeah, I, I think there's quite a bit of risk for next year. And if you look at, um, well, the U.S. stock market, we have a perfect double top for tech stocks. Look at what happens with the Nasdaq. Some of these shares are selling, I have a valuation of 80 times not earnings, but 80 times sales. You know, there's accident waiting to happen. So I put out a tweet last week, uh, a message to myself, sell all my tech uh, <laughs> stocks. I don't have any, yeah. but well, um, you, you, you get the point. I want to look at, um, you know, the global uncertainty we're facing. I mean, obviously you're following the news coming out of the Red Sea. Uh, so my, my major question is, you know, is global trade here at risk? I mean, the latest news, BP has become, uh, you know, the most recent firm to pause travel through the Suez Canal following a series of attacks on vessels by Houthi militants from Yemen. Um, you know, what do you make of this uh, news that's coming from the Red Sea. I mean, how 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 big can this get? Well, this is one of the major risks for next year, for 24. Um, most investors think this will be uh, quite a small, <laughs> a limited military action, you know, just in the Gaza. And we almost forget about it. But don't forget, there has been uh, some... Uh, action on the northern front of Israel with Hezbollah in Lebanon. And I think when the uh, Israeli military is uh, is almost finished in Gaza, 
which is of course a, a, a huge human disaster. And but then I, I think they will start to act in, in, in on the northern front because Hezbollah is a serious threat there, and I think they don't want to have another October seventh. And you also have, of course, Iran. You have uh, Yemen. You have the. Um, the Houthis. So uh, this conflict could get a bit larger, and uh, it's a very dangerous development. A very dangerous development. But to your bigger point, and I'm going to bring up a quote you said to me once upon a time. You said the West has only 1.5 billion people. The rest of the world has 7 billion. If you look at the GDP, the BRICS GDP, so we could talk the BRICS, is already larger than the G7 GDP. So it's a numbers game, and you say the West is losing it. Oh yeah, and if you look at uh, from a geopolitical uh, point of view uh, to the Ukraine war and the Gaza war, you see this divide as well. So the West is supporting uh, Ukraine. Uh, most of the countries worldwide, there are over 140 countries who don't join the Western sanctions against Russia, and exactly the same countries, these 104, let's say, independent countries they seem to join the BRICS side um, also in the Israeli conflict. So the Western countries are supplying, are supporting Israel, but all the other countries are supporting Palestina. So you have this new East-West divide, and I think this will become a major, major topping in, in the years to come. Well, you, you have spoken about a financial World War Three. I mean, could that be on the horizon in 2024? Well, look what happened in uh, Saudi Arabia in the last few weeks. Putin, Putin is not traveling a lot, and he went with the huge delegation to Jeddah and was welcomed there as a great friend. And uh, it was quite uh, remarkable that the, the central bank uh, governor um, of the Russian central bank was also present. So there's all this talk about the end of the petrodollar deal. Uh, we see Saudi pivoting from the west to the east. Never forget that the Saudis were the defenders of the US dollar after uh, Nixon closed the gold win window by promising they would sell oil only in dollars. They promised that to Kissinger in 1974, and they're pivoting east now. And that's a huge change uh, from a geopolitical point of view. Yeah, I think that was a headline that didn't get enough attention. I mean, like you said, you saw the warm welcome Putin received. This is only his third trip uh, since the invasion of Ukraine, besides, uh, you know, Ch China and Iran. So I think it was extremely telling, Willem. Oh, incredible. And and it also, um, um, it, well, it pointed me back to in time uh, to towards 2019. You might remember the video that uh, Putin was entering a G20 uh, meeting and he walked up to the uh, the Saudi leader, MBS, and he gave the high five on video. You, yeah. <laughs> uh, Trump was walking in the back and everybody was surprised by that footage and nobody really understand why they were... Uh, well, why they seem to be very close friends. But now we start to get the picture. You know, you have the BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa with friends uh, like uh, the Saudis. And they're working on a parallel trading system. They're working on a, a parallel monetary system. That's 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 my opinion. And we also know that they have pointed to the fact that they would like to have to be their new system to be it uh, to, uh, to have it gold linked or gold backed, and I think that's that's also explains why gold is trading so strong. Let's talk about the U.S. dollar a second here because I thought this headline uh, from Bloomberg was interesting that Goldman Sachs hedge funds see the dollar weakening, uh, you know, given the signal signal of the Fed rate cut. Now, on the flip side, we had you know Fidelity being bu bullish. Uh, U.S. dollars. So we still have firms bullish the U.S. dollars if they're compare if, because they're they're seeing weakening global growth. But I think that the fact that Goldman and hedge funds are coming out really saying they're bearish on the U.S. dollar. I mean, it's, sometimes it's hard to figure out where does the truth lie. Well, of course, the dollar has been remarkable strong in the last uh, let's say two years. And so from a technical point of view, uh, you could expect a correction. The correction has already started. But if you look at the dollar from a fun fundamental point of view, the weakening of the, of the West, the weakening of the US, uh, look what happens with uh, the elections coming up. You know, you have to choose between Trump and Biden. I think this will be a nightmare uh, what will happen uh, in November next year. And 
and so there are lot, uh, lots of reasons to be bearish on the dollar. Uh, but never forget, these changes always take longer than you expect. So I think we're in for a big reset. The big reset has started. Mm -hmm. We'll see a change um, with the West and the dollar losing power and the East, the BRICS countries gaining power. Uh, you know, and on that note, I know we've spoken a lot about central bank digital currencies in past interviews, and I just had a guest, Edward Dowd, on, who said he wouldn't be surprised if we could see it ushered in as quickly as 2024. He, see, he thinks that if we should see a stock market crash of about 50%, that at the tail end, that's when they would come in and usher it in. I mean, just want to get your thoughts of how you, first of all, do you think we could see it as early as uh, 2024 here in the United States seems kind of quick. And two, how would they usher it in? Uh, well, we all know that, um, um, well, never waste a good crisis. Crises are often used to uh, present new ideas, to uh, pre even present a new system. Uh, we know the Chinese are ahead of us uh, with their central bank digital currency, which seem to be quite uh, popular there. Uh, it's quite clear that in the US and also in Europe with the ECB, they're working hard to test a central bank digital currency. I think it will be very hard and difficult to fight it. Um, but there's one advantage now. In the past, I was always afraid that uh, the East and the West would, uh, well, join forces and roll out a worldwide digital currency. Uh, but now we have the BRICS with their own system, working on their own system. We have the West having their own plans and fighting the BRICS. So I think there's always a place for, uh, well, investors to hide uh, because there's not one game plan. You know, in, in the past, we could be afraid that the uh, World Economic Forum from Davos was having well, they are, they are the action plan ready and they even wanted to have uh, Putin joining them. But that's that's history now. We have two sides. We can choose. Uh, I was excited to get you on, Willem, because I'm sure you've seen um, on Twitter and, uh, and other social media platforms the talk of The Great Taking. It's uh, a book uh, by David Webb. He wrote it a few months ago. Now he has a documentary out on it. But it basically says you you we already own nothing, right? And he's a former Wall Street uh, insider, so it's not just you know someone writing this book. Like he's someone that was once in the know. And if I had to sum up what he's saying, he basically says we're very close to a financial co collapse. He looks at what's been done to interest rates, where they are now, and the scale of insolvencies that are being covered up. He says there's a big hidden hand injecting lots of created money into financial markets. And that's basically what's preventing the markets from collapsing. And he also says that institutions believe they have downside risk by buying protection in the derivatives market. So all this is basically what's keeping the market afloat. Now, I know some people were afraid to, to approach the talking about this book, yeah. but I mean, uh, you know, I'm not afraid it's not so far fetched, right? What he's saying. Well, we know there are risk uh, in markets. Yeah. They can close down banks. They can close down exchanges. It doesn't ve uh, happen very often, but it can happen. And that's why it's so, so important to diversify your assets as secure as possible. And I always use my simple uh, portfolio, you know, 25% of your assets in real estate, 25% in physical gold and silver, only 25% in stocks, and then 25% we keep as liquid as possible. We can use Bitcoin or, or even cash. And if you do that, you own debt-free assets. When you own debt-free assets, um, like real estate, like precious metals, you will always survive. So don't get too scared. Um, it's important to get a good night's rest, but be sure you ha you're diversified uh, very well. Uh, you know what I think is interesting, and, and let me know if you agree with me or not, is that you know whether you think these books are conspiracy theories or not, or far-fetched, at least it gets a conversation going of people thinking, well, you know, maybe there is a lot of manipulation to the system. Or shadows. No, I, I think when you read the book, and I read the book, book, and you can download it for free. You can find it online. It's by uh, David Rogers yeah. Webb, and, and it's called The Great Taking. I think it's good to read it. And and we heard similar remarks by Jim Ricketts, who uh, has warned us that they could freeze all assets 
and just closed stock exchanges for some time and have, have a public holiday or a bank holiday uh, to restructure the system. But I always point out to uh, Warren, Buffett's, Warren Buffett's dad, he bought a farm in the early 20th century. And, and at a certain point, they sold the farm because they always bought the farm, you know, to survive a crash, a crisis, but they never needed the farm. So the real crisis everyone is afraid of uh, hardly never arrives. Let's talk about the bank insolvencies for a second. I mean, we're talking about trends in 2024. Do you think uh, this will, we'll see more bank runs uh, in the new year? Well, bank runs are rare as well. But if we look at the quality of the balance sheets, we know there's some huge damage being done to balance sheets of uh, banks, commercial banks, but even central banks because of the bond crash we had in uh, especially last year. Um, so commercial banks are still at risk. We've seen the takeover of uh, Credit Suisse by UBS in Switzerland, which brings huge risk to Switzerland and the Swiss financial system because UBS is, is too big to save now. Um, and we've seen central bank uh, presidents in Europe explaining how they might be um, able to use gold revaluation accounts to strengthen the balance sheet of central banks because central banks are having some difficulties of their own. And that's why I think a gold revaluation is still in the cards. And I mean, you saw the toxic culture articles emerging from the FDIC. I mean, that's just one point. But the other point is, and I know Zero Hedge wrote an opinion piece on this as, you know, do we even need the FDIC? Or I mean, do, do we need a complete overhaul of the system? Well, um, since the start of the Federal Reserve, of course, we uh, lost a lot. We lost a lot of, uh, well, uh, uh, if, you, if you look at the value of the dollar, uh, the purchasing power declined by 95%. But we also should point out to the positive fact, since the Federal Reserve is there, they have been able to avoid um, uh, financial panics for most of the time. Of course, in 2008, we came close. Uh, of course, there are still risks. There are huge risks. Uh, but I think central bankers are, they're, they're, not, they're not stupid. They understand the history of money. They understand the history of monetary systems. They understand you can do monetary resets. That's always been my main thesis. Central banks know they will need to have a monetary reset somewhere in the not too distant future. And they might even might need to have a revaluation of gold as well. I'll bring up this point since you mentioned purchasing power, let's talk inflation. And I'll bring up this headline. I mean, I know a lot of people were laughing at it, but I, I think you, you, we should more likely cry when reading it about uh, the uh, governor of the Central Bank of Turkey. I mean, due to the rampant inflation there was forced to move back in with her parents. but. Willem, I know yeah. a lot of my friends in Italy and even here in Canada and even in the United States that have been forced to move back in with their parents. I mean, it's not just a laughing headline. It's actually a reality for many folks. Yeah. yeah and of course, we've been talking and warning about the superinflation for quite some time now. Uh, inflation is coming down. Interest rates are coming down. So that helps. Um, uh, but I'm afraid for the next lack up. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bit afraid that the inflation will run in, in two or three phases. And after the decline in inflation we experience now, we could have a restart of the next phase of a wave of inflation later in 24 and in 25. And that's something to watch carefully. And if you have, um, if you have flexible interest rates, uh, this decline might be a great moment to, uh, well, to take some longer term uh, fixed interest yeah. rates. And look at what's happened. You know, we saw what happened in, in Argentina. And I say, imagine waking up and you find your uh, currency cut in half. But it's, it, it is a, it is something well, that could happen. The debasement of currency is an ongoing process. Uh, as you know, the appendix in the big reset, uh, people can download it for free at our website, has, uh, has a list of over 200 currencies, which were all uh, fiat currencies and all disappeared. So uh, I think people understand how they can hatch themselves. Uh, and, and, and more and more people, we see, that, we see it in our office, more and more people are looking to um, diversify into hedges yeah. 
like Bitcoin, like precious metals. So something that used to be like a uh, like a fringe investment is, is becoming mainstream now. And that's 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 a huge change. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with you on that one, Willem. I'll give you the final word. Like I said, it's our Outlook series. Uh, what do you want folks to know as we are wrapping up 2023, heading into 2024? What should be the mindset? Well, let's start on, a, uh, let's end on a positive yes. note. And <laughs> yeah, uh, the party is starting and that's the party for uh, commodity investors like ourselves. Uh, I started the commodity fund in 2008. That was the top of the last cycle. We had a bear market for 15 years. And I think there's a real uh, there's a real chance we'll get a very serious uh, bull market, which will have some lags. It could run for 10, 15, 20 years because of supply and demand, because of the debasement of currency, because of the inflation. So there's a perfect storm developing for uh, commodity investors. And forget about gold and silver. They will do well. But watch the battery metals, watch uh, lithium, watch copper. You know, they, they also had a huge correction in the last 12 to 18 months. And we see the market turning already. Uh, we were up 5% in November. Uranium is very strong. The PGMs. Uh, so, yeah, PGMs are starting. They, they bottomed out. Look what happened to palladium in the last week. Yep. We're up 50%. So I think there's, there's some money to be made, finally. All right. Well, thank you for, for some optimism there. And Willem, as always, I wish you uh, continued success and above all, Good health. Thank you, my friend. It's always nice to speak with you. Bye. And thank you all for watching. We'll have more incredible content coming your way. So be sure to stay tuned to our Outlook 2024. And happy holidays to all. Don't forget to sign up at dingalacombonian.com so you stay on top of it all. That's it for me. Thanks for watching.